We do see uh, RAS in around 90% of these patients. Most of the RAS that we see, it's uh, low grade, grade one, grade two. I think it's important we understand the distribution between grade one and two, which is something that will be disclosed in the, in the future. How the RAS is managed is similar to how we manage RAS in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer treated with EGFR inhibitors. So we start preemptive treatment with antibiotic, with uh, typically a tetracycline uh, twice a day. And then we also do some topical interventions, uh, topical steroids, uh, topical antibiotics like clindamycin, interventions with Dapson. Uh, and we have in some patients needed to even escalate treatment to oral Dapson. And uh, a couple of my patients also needed oral retinoids, right? So a wide range of different interventions. Most of the times we can manage this with oral antibiotics and some topical uh, steroids. Uh, we think that compared to historical controls, the data speaks for itself, like PFS around eight months more than duplicates the typical PFS that we see in the second line in patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer when we look at studies like the uh, Napoli uh, trial, looking at uh, Naliri 5 few. Uh, of course, uh, the response rate is also substantially improved compared to historical controls. The response rate in this uh, early phase trial is in that range of close to 30%. And when you look at the Napoli trial, when you look at confirmed response, looking at the FDA label, the response rate is uh, in the single digit. It's around 7%, different to what was reported on the initial manuscript, where unconfirmed responses were also included. Uh, overall survival, it's also very promising, standard of care, overall survival, around six months. In this study, across the different range of doses that we have explored, right from 160 to 300, we see median overall survival of 14 months. The median overall survival for patients treated at the 300 uh, milligram cohort has not been uh, yet reached, so we will learn more in the future about this, but regardless, likely to, or it will be uh, positive compared to historical controls. For those patients who have stable disease, right, who had CTDNA reduction, was there a different out, difference in outcome compared to those who didn't have uh, CTDNA reduction? And we don't have that data. Or we, will, we have the data, but we haven't looked into, into that yet, right? So what we can see from the data is that 90% of patients have uh, CTDNA reductions, more than 50%, right? and that um, there was a group of patients where we could see uh, complete eradication of the ctDNA, close to 50% of the, of the patient. How that will impact outcome uh, will something we will learn uh, down the road, but it helped us understand the context of responses, right? We do see a response rate around 30%, but we still see molecular responses in more than uh, patients that we see radiological responses, so that means that patients who get stable disease are still deriving some benefit, at least shown by molecular responses. Uh, when this study was initially designed, um, the patient population that was enrolled were patients with uh, mutations in uh, codon 12, right? As the study continued to enroll, they allowed patients with uh, mutations in other codons, like uh, codon 13 or codon uh, 61. The uh, study that we present here uh, suggests that the response rate is higher for patients with codon 12 mutations versus other type of uh, mutations. The rationale for that was uh, recently uh, provided in a very elegant uh, work by uh, Peter Litos lab at Memorial Sloan, where they, in preclinical uh, models, they look at uh, these different RAS mutations, and they were able to uh, found that uh, RAS mutations in codon 12 uh, bind or form the tri a tricomplex that is uh, less stable the, compared to the tricomplex that is formed with uh, RAS mutations in codon 61. Why this is important is because when the tricomplex dissociates, that leads to uh, the protein uh, increasing the hydrolysis uh, so that the protein, the RAS active protein, transitions to a non-active state of RAS where it's bind to GDP. And that uh, essentially suggests that for patients with uh, colon, or in preclinical models at least, with colon 12 mutations, there's two unique mechanisms of actions for this drug. One is forming the tricomplex that inhibits downstream signaling to RAF, uh, MEK, and ERK, 
and the other mechanism of action is deactivating the protein, increasing the hydrolysis so that that RAS activated transition to the non-active state. With other uh, non-G12 uh, mutations, with mutations in, for instance, G13 or Q61, the tricomplex forms a more stable uh, binding, right? And we don't, or they didn't see that hydro increased hydrolysis that we see with uh, G12, which contributes to explain perhaps not having that mechanism of action, perhaps less sensitivity uh, compared to G12. Rasolid is a randomized phase three study that started study accruing patients in November 2024, so still early on accrual. Uh, and this study randomized patients uh, with metastatic pancreatic cancer to two different arms. Uh, experimental arm with um, the multi-RAS inhibitor and then a control arm where patients will receive standard of care chemotherapy second line, either uh, napaclitaxel gemcitabine or nalidi 5 fu or uh, modified uh, fulfirinox. The primary uh, endpoint of the study is a dual primary endpoint of uh, progression-free survival and overall survival. And they are doing a nested analysis where they are looking first at the uh, population of patients with uh, mutations in colon 12 and then expand that analysis to other uh, RAS mutations. What we expect to see hopefully that the study will be positive, that there will be improvement in progression-free survival and especially overall survival and that uh, the study will be able to show that um, this drug makes patients live longer compared to standard of care chemotherapy.